Hey, it's Moon Kitty with an eye, isn't it? <coughs> Whew, excuse me. Oh, with an eye, as in, I decided to skip the rest of these lame books and go right to my favorite arc of all time, Omen of the Stars, because I, Moon Kitty, make my own rules, and you can't tell me what to do. So, we start off in Starclan, where everyone is standing around and shrugging their shoulders as they realize that Hollyleaf wasn't one of the three. Whoops. They also not so subtly keep referring to Hollyleaf as being lost, instead of saying that she's dead. Oh, wow, I wonder what that could possibly mean. Instead of telling Jayfeather or Lionblades what the heck is going on, Yellowfang decides to visit the mysterious third cat, thinking that telling a kid that she is part of a prophecy she knows absolutely nothing about is the most efficient way to handle this. Meanwhile, the clans are suffering through a horrible drought. This drought is so bad that the other clans are even more prone to unreasonable hostility than usual. Oh, and it's drying up the lake. That's important too. Jayfeather and Lion Blaze have some chapters here, but they really aren't important other than letting you know that everyone is getting really thirsty, especially Jayfeather, whose boyfriend keeps ignoring his calls. We finally get to know who the third cat is, Dovekit, a magical kitten with the power to hear and see things that are really far away. How far away? Well, she can hear Leopard Star dying on the other side of the lake in River Clan, and can see what's blocking the river and drying up the lake. If this seems like a really interesting and fresh idea, don't worry, the authors progressively ignore her powers as the series continues, making you wonder what was the point of her powers to begin with, and only use it when it's convenient for plot reasons. Dovekit also has a sister, Ivy Kit, and they get apprenticed by Lionblaze and Cinderheart respectively. Because of Dovepaw's powers, she's naturally better at hunting than Ivy Paw. This makes Ivy Paw really jealous. Dovepaw is confused why nobody is doing anything about the big brown animals blocking the streams miles up the river. When everyone calls her an imaginative child, Dovepaw is understandably upset that no one will believe her. Needless to say, it doesn't take long for Jayfeather and Lionblaze to figure out that Dovepaw is actually one of the three. And even Firestar finally figures out and desperately tries to be included in their secret club. Okay, geez, fine, Firestar, Jayfeather says. But you don't get club benefits. That's what you think. Firestar says back, What? Don't worry about it, Firestar slyly replies. So eventually, Firestar decides to believe that Dovepaw isn't crazy, and that there actually are big brown creatures, <coughs> beavers, blocking the stream. He convinces the other leaders to send their best warriors to go unblock the stream. Only none of them send their best warriors, aside from Firestar sending Lionblaze, and instead send a majority of nobodies to go on this really important mission. They share very little dynamic and believable, meaningful interactions with each other so that when one of these chosen warriors dies, you forget about it by the time you start reading the next book. Also, Tigerheart is there. Meanwhile, back in ThunderClan, Jayfeather is getting his butt kicked by two garbage sons as they try to kill a pregnant woman. Boy, Breeze Pelt sure is a relatable character. Back upstream, after generic RiverClan warrior number two dies, the group bands together and figures out a way to tear the beaver den down. Why the beavers don't just build a new dam after the cats wash way downstream is anybody's guess, but somehow this all works out just fine and Dovepaw and Lionblaze go home. Oh, also, Jayfeather gets really angry that Rock won't return his calls, so he breaks his stick. And that's how Dovepaw saved Christmas. Oh, this is gonna be bad. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas.